Now in campfire cooking, he does start off by making a really simple dish, and this is called onion consomme. The thing is though, is that he uses store-bought onion pack mix stuff, which is very common in a lot of places. It's essentially broken down onions that are dried, and then you reconstitute it and you make stock. It's, it's like using the granulated dashi that I normally use. Now since best boy Muk Mukoda, I that name is very difficult for me to pronounce. Mukoda. This guy, since he does have to make it for an entire party with this first dish, which is gonna be onion consomme, I'm gonna be making this for two, for my wife and I. Now onion consomme is fairly simple, but there is one technique that I'm gonna be teaching you guys today, so this way you can make it at home. Into my pot, I'm using like three to four tablespoons worth of oil. You're gonna use a neutral oil for this. Then place all of your onions in this with a cold pot. There's a reason for this. We're gonna be cooking these slow and low to caramelize them. Little did I know, I've been campfire cooking the entire time I've been on YouTube. If you guys want to pick up one of these, they're honestly an, a great investment. They're like 40 bucks. You just do have to buy the butane, but they're amazing. I'll try to remember to put a link down below. I got to admit, when you guys first told me about this anime, I honestly thought he was actually going to be cooking over a campfire. I had no idea what to expect from this anime, but I'm really enjoying it, especially because of Fenrir. That wolf god, okay, not a cat god, reminds me of Gandalf. He's a cat, wolf, doesn't matter. I think Gandalf can out eat Fenrir. I'm going to cook this for like an hour, not here over there because I'll run out of butane. Now to go along with that beautiful onion consomme we're gonna have, we're gonna make ham and cheese sandwiches. I don't actually know if this was ham and cheese, but it very much looked like it may, could have possibly been ham and cheese. This is just some really delicious local Tillamook cheddar that I'm having a very hard time slicing. You only need a few slices of this. I'm gonna set it right here next to this beautiful local ham that I found. It's really nice. My friends, Fenrir has joined us. Would you like a small piece of cheese? Fenrir, he's gonna, oh my God, oh my God. Fenrir, stop. There you go. Now he's gonna bother me for the next two hours while I'm in here. Now like anyone who's a lazy gamer with those amazing powers to order anything, I went and got, look at this beautiful loaf of bread. Now admittedly, he may have been using Shokupan in the show, but this is beautiful. It's, look at, look at the air pockets in there. Bam, there we go. We're gonna use these two slices of bread. Now for these sandwiches, I'm doing just a little bit of mayo. You don't want a ton of it. Optional mustard, okay? See that? Not a ton, just a little bit on there, just for flavor. Now we're gonna do cheddar, just on one side. This one just gets one piece of cheddar, because Gandalf ate too much of it. Then we're gonna take some of this ham. Look at how thinly sliced this is, so you're gonna need quite a few pieces, I think. I'm gonna fold this like this. Let's do three pieces on each. I think that's nice, it's a nice stack. Now with all of our slices ready to go, this is when I'm just gonna take this, cut this in half, and we just do one of those. Take these sandwiches, okay? We're gonna place them onto this tray. Then, plastic wrap, okay, over the whole thing. This will keep this nice and fresh. Optional, take another tray if you have it, or you can just use plates. Place this right on top. Then take something moderately heavy, like this Legend of Zelda pewter beer mug, and place it right on top to kind of press these down a little bit. This is gonna just sit in the fridge until the onion soup is ready, which does need more time. I should probably stir it. While that consomme is still going, it literally still needs another half an hour, I'm gonna actually start the stew that we're gonna have as part of this feast apparently because this isn't gonna be an all day thing. We can make all of this at one time, which is way more efficient. Now for the stew, it has chopped cabbage, which I have right here. Oh God, that's on the floor now. You wanna do a nice rough chop on this. If it's too small, it'll fall apart too quickly in this soup. I'm using two carrots, that half head of cabbage, and then I have three potatoes right over here. I'm just using some red potatoes because I feel like they hold up in soups like this a little bit better. Now for this potato, because we're not gonna need it for a while still, I'm gonna place this into this container or whatever you got really. We're gonna fill two of these with water so it doesn't oxidize while we're waiting to use them, okay? Now with our vegetables done, we can move on to the main part of this, which is the pork, or in this case, bacon. He actually, I think he used pork for every single dish in episode one, or a version of pork. I should say. This is just some really nice local applewood smoked bacon. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a side of pork or a side of bacon, so that way I could cut it myself and have those nice chunks. So I'm just gonna cut this to be relatively big. Now back to our beautiful star of the show, which I'm still kind of disappointed, didn't even really use. Into my very nice braising pot, or you can just use a regular pot, throwing in all my bacon. Make sure that all that bacon is broken up because of the way we cut it. Now we wait 15 minutes. Maybe that's why they only eat at night. Now my bacon has been going for maybe 15, almost 20 minutes, and I've just had it kind of at a medium heat. Now we can add everything else except for the potatoes. I'm gonna stir all of this together, yes. 
Now, once all of that is nicely tossed together, you can see some of the fat glistening on that cabbage. That's what you're looking for, right? So it's nice and coated. This is when we take our store-bought stock. This is just vegetable stock. It would be better with homemade stock, but we gotta use something from the store every single time, right? That's the whole point of these skills. Normally, you, you have to put the potatoes in while the water isn't boiling yet, so this way they cook all the way through. If you put potatoes into boiling water, it'll cook the outside before the inside gets tender. So I'm putting the potatoes in now. This also actually doesn't feel like enough water. I wanna make sure there's enough liquid in here to make sure that the potatoes are fully covered. Lid on this guy, we're gonna bring it to a boil and cook it until the potatoes are tender. This is gonna go for like 45 minutes probably. Now we're back to the consomme. These have been going for quite a while now. I actually really love this. Like juggling multiple dishes is super fun to me. I know it might be harder to follow along, so I'll make sure I include recipes for everything on chefpk.com. I am trying to build all of the recipes there. I know I'm really bad at it, but for this, I'm gonna make sure I do that because this is, this is not easy to follow. I fully admit that. Now for onion consomme, we have to deglaze this with red wine. I just have a nice red blend. I think this was like an $8 bottle of wine. Oh, it smells so good. Now we're gonna cook this down until that wine is almost gone. You can already see it's kind of evaporating very quickly. Once most of that liquid is gone, there's just a little bit left in there. It's not all the way gone. I'm gonna add in some nice filtered water right into this. Now this has to come up to a simmer again. And now consomme needs eggs. The entire idea behind consomme is having a very beautiful clarified broth. You can do this in a few ways, but the most common ways is with egg whites. I'm gonna separate two eggs because eggs are incredibly expensive. This is what my onion soup has started to look like. This has been boiling for just about five minutes. And really, you just want to boil that so all of those flavors and everything off the bottom comes up. Now, we have to strain this a few times. First, I'm going to be straining it into this little pot. This helps me catch all the onions that we really want to save. For now, I'm going to take all these onions. I'm going to place them back into this pot, make onion jam with it. Now, with the same strainer, but with a coffee filter, this is going to be strained into this second pot. And I'm gonna finish the soup in this pot that it's going into with those egg whites. And we'll be back in a second. I'll be here for a minute. I have finally strained out all of my consomme. This literally took 15, almost 20 minutes to get it through and two coffee filters. This is where the egg whites come in. So we're gonna bring this back up to a boil and we're gonna dump in the egg whites all at one time. Now you can see why our best boy decided to just use it out of the packet. Give this a quick stir, make sure it's not stuck on the bottom. Now we let it come up to a boil. This has to come up to a boil very quickly. Now once this comes up to a boil, I have to immediately turn it back down to a simmer. This is going to sit for another 15 minutes or so just to reduce slightly and so this way all the egg white starts to really capture any impurities in the soup. What I'm also going to do is I'm gonna throw some fresh thyme in here and realistically, I should have put this in when I was maybe either making the first batch of the soup, like before we added the egg whites and before we strained it, or even during cooking the onion process, but I'm gonna put this in now because we still have to strain it an additional time. Now, after straining all of that liquid from the original liquid soup with the raft, this is what I have left. If you can see right there, there's some pockets of fat left onto this soup. That's what we were straining out. This is what my egg whites look like. You can see how they've kind of discolored. They've absorbed a lot of the impurities in there, right? That's what we were straining out. And then we're left with this. This is literally liquid gold. There's no fat deposits on that. It's just pure liquid. Now we get to plate this up. I really wanted to find a clear glass jar to show the consomme. I don't know if this is tempered or not. We're gonna find out. This is only for demonstration purposes. You do not need to plate this up in a beaker that might crack. It's dark because it's onion, but you can see right up here, there's no fat deposits. This is probably one of the better ones that I've made. It almost just looks like black tea. That's gorgeous. But of course I'm not having it out of there. Instead, I'm gonna have it out of this cat mug because, because yes, some green onions in this guy. Then I'm gonna be fancy, get our sandwiches out. Out. Yes, I'm so excited for this. I know it's just ham and cheese, but it's one of my favorite combinations. Look at that lunch. That looks so good to me right now, especially on a cold day. Look at, look at that. I think the, the first thing to do is sip some of the onion soup. It's sweet. You can taste some of the red wine in there. When you have a little bit of the bite from the fresh green onions, this is just, it's so smooth and so delicate. A lot of work, but it's worth it. Now for the ham and cheese. While it's still in your mouth. This is amazing. It shouldn't be this good. Now for that stew. 
This has been sitting and simmering. Look at how hardy this look. Look at, if that doesn't make you feel like you want to cozy up in a blanket next to Fenrir, I don't know what will. I'll keep any adventurer happy in my opinion, you know? I'm just gonna dig into this. These potatoes are gonna be incredibly hot, but look at the bacon. See that right on top of potato? It knows what I want. That, my friends, is how I like my potatoes for my stew. All the cabbage is absorbed, all that, all that broth. It's sweet from the carrots, smokiness from the bacon. Now, for dinner, why am I turning around every time I start talking? For dinner, I'm gonna be making this beautiful pork dish. Now, they did use wild boar, which is very difficult to find, so instead, we're gonna be using pork, which is not as gamey, but it's comparable. I have one cup worth of soy sauce, a half cup worth of white vinegar, a good handful of fresh ginger, like a bunch of this, you're gonna need this. One clove of garlic, because it can be very strong in this recipe. Then I have about one half an onion that I just had sliced already. And then I'm gonna have one whole lime that I I'm gonna squeeze directly into this. You can also use lemon juice, that's totally fine. It's probably better, but I have lime. I forgot to buy a lemon. And then we're gonna add about just one tablespoon worth of sugar. I actually don't want this too sweet. Lock and load this bad boy. Ginger sauce. Woo! Oh yeah. Oh, it's amazing. After blending this though, it adds quite a bit of air to the sauce. So I'm gonna let this hang out for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. Now the next piece is the star of the show. And this is gonna be the pork. Now again, he does use wild boar for this recipe. If you have access to wild boar, please use wild boar. Luckily in my area, pork is actually relatively cheap. So I'm able to get these two chunks, these two big chunkers of pork. Look at this. You know how much this was? Six bucks for all this pork. All we're gonna really do is slice this nice and thin. Bam, look at that, five slices out of that one piece of pork. This is, this is gonna be so much food. We're gonna do the same thing for the second one. Now we're gonna place this into whatever apparatus you have to make sure that these marinate properly. I'm just using a bowl so this way I can easily get the marinade on everything and then just let it kind of sit in a shallow bath of the marinade. My marinade has been sitting for about 20 or 30 minutes now and you see it start to separate. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna stir this back together gently to not increase too much air into the marinade because I really don't want that. And then I'm gonna pour this beautiful, delicious marinade over the top of my pork. Oh yes. Make sure that this is fully coated, fully submerged. This is only gonna sit for about 10, 15 minutes and then we're gonna cook this down. After that has marinated for about 10 minutes, we get to finally make this dinner. Ooh, I can put in quite a bit. Oh yes, there's a little bit of sizzle. Now he does specifically say that he likes to cook this, making sure that the pork is cooked all the way through and then we're gonna caramelize that. So we do have to pay attention to this really, really closely. After about two, maybe three minutes on one side, I'm gonna flip these and then then I'm gonna crank up this heat. My fire is dying. It would be really nice if I actually had online grocery power where I could just put in a quarter and then get a can of propane. Nice. Now I have my flame on super high. This way we can maybe get some caramelization on this. Oh yeah, there it is. Getting some color on there now. This is ready. Let's plate this up. Luckily for me, I always keep shredded cabbage in the fridge because it's it's one of my favorite vegetables. Do up quite a few of these pieces. We're just gonna go all four of them. Do a little juice on there, served with some more local toast. There is honestly a very beautiful plate of food. What I really wanna do is try each thing in conjunction with itself, just like they did in the show. So first is gonna be just the pork by itself. That marinade is delicious. It's really nice, it's juicy. It is a little tough because it's such a lean piece of meat. And I honestly think we could let that marinade longer. Now I'm gonna try it with the cabbage. Huh? The cabbage adds some crunch, adds some texture. Mm. Mm -hmm. And now I have to try the ultimate form in between the bread. But remember, at a million subscribers, I'm buying a food truck to feed you guys anime food, so make sure you get subscribed. We're gonna get there this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Cheers. That's the winner. My name is Chef PK. Remember, keep playing with your food. Yeah.